Hello, I'm Lugatorix, and welcome to part 37 of the Greek Cities campaign on Rome Total War. And we are getting to the point where, well, the series is nearly at an end. There's just a few loose ends to tie up, but those loose ends could be some pretty tricky ones. Because we are trying to kill off the Julii, in northern Italy anyway at the very least. And we have Doors of Sparta on this bridge, probably going to be attacked in a minute by Captain Harris, which is absolutely fine by me because... If they want to attack us on the bridge, they're more than welcome to, but the Romans can be a bit tricky sometimes. We also have Aretium under siege with Fidon of Salinas. And then, of course, we are trying to finish off the Egyptians. Now, we have a boat going over towards Salamis, this one here. And we also have... Do we have a force actually going over to Bostra? Technically not. And there's this big army of Kia around. So we might have to combine the forces of Jerusalem, which is this army here of Philip, basically, is what we're calling him and the army of Philolas of Sipsila, but they're retraining at the moment. Combined, that should be enough to go and take Bostra, which would be nice. That's something I'd like to do. And then also we're forming a little army over here in Thebes that's going to take Siwa. The only reason I want to take Siwa, and actually, oddly enough, the only reason I went to war with Numidia in the first place is because it's so satisfying to get Siwa and Lepkis Magna on the map because they're just huge territories and it makes it look so much better when they're in your colour. So that's what I was thinking when I went towards Numidia. So I don't actually think there's anything more we can do because we can't take Salamis or Mediolanium, sorry, Aretium or Bostro or anything like that. We haven't got the siege equipment, blah, blah, blah. And also the Dacians, by the way. You know, don't forget about the Dacians. We're moving towards Uvavum and we're moving towards Lovacy as well. So, you know, I'd like to finish off the Dacians as well if possible. But technically, we have already got up to 50 regions, 51 regions technically, so all we need to do technically now is take Rome, but you know, we'll take a, we'll take our time about it, we'll try and kill off as many people as we can in the process, so I, I think I'm ready to end the turn actually, so let's just get straight into it, end the turn, diplomat moving around, that's fine by me, nothing particularly exciting going on there, an army moving up north, a senate, ah, ah oh, now this is interesting, this is interesting and annoying, um, okay, Right, so the Senate have come up and they've just been bumbling around Rome for a while, which has suited me. Now, I don't have a problem fighting the Senate, but I don't want to fight them with this army. Fight and Salinas, you can see it's not a lot of men. 600 men versus a solid 1,900 is going to be tough to deal with any day of the week. Now, I personally think we should back off, purely because there's no point fighting the Senate if we're definitely going to take a loss. That's too many men against us. It's a 3 to 1 strength ratio. I'm, I'm happy to back off, take my time. Combine the force of Fidon of Salinas and Doris the Brave, then you've got a good enough army to fight the Senate. So I'll back off from there. Senate are also moving around. Ah, now this navy's been attacked outside of Salamis. A bit annoying. We do have the advantage though. Clear victory. Good. We needed that because we don't want to be knocked back from taking Salamis. So that was very, very good that we won that. Dacia, don't do anything with Julii now. Now they're attacking a random navy here which we actually won, but really doesn't matter at this point, to be honest. These navies are not really doing much at the moment. Okay, Julii, we, we get the point. We're actually winning these. I mean, I don't know how we're winning. Okay, clear defeat, but we, we won quite a few there, actually. Okay, so now we have a real fight. Carthage. Krathis of Samos has finally been attacked by the Numidians. Now, this force isn't amazing. It's 483 men to 395, but three of the units are peasants. These units are depleted Libyan mercenaries. I really should have actually recruited something in Carthage here, but I do think we have the advantage with the walls. So what has Captain Stembanos got? A bunch of desert infantry, some archers, not a huge amount to be honest. So I think we have a pretty good chance here. The first battle of the day will hopefully be knocking back the Numidians at Carthage. Let's see how we do. Right, so here we are in the ancient city of Carthage. Now, how are we going to do this? I think, if you remember, I think we defended Thapsus a couple of episodes ago. And what we did is we had the missile troops on the walls. They fired as many missiles as they could before they got to the walls, which is an inevitability. And then they dropped back to the plaza where they had infinite morale. And the infantry, which were already on the plaza, were also managed to hold it. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. So what we'll do is we'll get the infantry on the plaza, the non-missile infantry anyway. So all of you guys, come back to the old plaza if you don't mind. Okay, this isn't amazing, but it's all we've got. We've got two units of hoplites. Both of them quite depleted, to be honest. Three peasants and the general. That's what we've got to hold the plaza. But we can do a good amount of damage on the walls with all these missile troops. I do very much believe that. 
So all these slingers, all these peltas and Libyan mercenaries, they are going to do a good job at getting a nice amount of damage from a height over at the Egyptians. Is this all... We've got this one unit that's hiding from us. Yeah, don't do that, lads. Um, just come over here, start throwing your stuff at them. Okay, so that's beautiful. Start the battle. And we'll see how much damage we can do. And remember, the walls do a lot of damage on Rome Total War. So they should they should be making hits as well. I think we can get a good amount of damage on them before they get in. And by the time they actually get in, they'll be so weak or their morale will be so damaged that the infantry should have a pretty easy job at taking them down. Incidentally, their siege tower has actually caught fire. And their ram. Oh, goodness. So the only way they can get up is via this ladder. Now, they are going to still get up. I absolutely believe they are still going to get up. But, that's a bad start for the Numidians. And already nearly a quarter of them have died. So, yeah. I do think we are going to have to evacuate the walls now. Because I don't want to risk these guys. These guys still have some missiles. And they can still do some damage on the plaza. So, get off skirmish mode. And what they can do is they can just stand behind these infantry. And they can just fire in their stuff on, on the lads when they come over. So, just stand there. General, you can move back slightly. Beautiful stuff. This is an example, by the way, of the sometimes dodgy AI on Rome Total War. These units, for example, these guys are just standing there and taking hits on the walls. The same goes for these archers. They're just standing there and taking hits. Look, they've just gone from 46 to 45 to 44. So, they're not helping themselves by just standing there and basically taking hits. And it means that we are already up to 39% kills. I'm very confident that we can win this and the balance of power is indeed in our favour now. So although we don't have a good army, by any stretch of the imagination, the walls have pretty much done the job anyway. So the Numidians have indeed infiltrated the walls. They are coming in now. So this is, I mean, this is it really. If they manage to swarm the plaza from both sides, they could possibly do it. But the fact that we have infinite morale on this plaza means I think we've definitely got the advantage. Okay, they're onto the plaza. Our missile units are firing in on the Desert Infantry, which is the most dangerous units they've got, the Desert Infantry. And, well, that unit's broken already. That unit's wavering. This is probably the strongest unit. They're eager. But, I mean, two wavering, sorry, two broken units already means that their morale is going to go down very, very quickly as soon as they hit those hot plates. I hope so, anyway. They've gone from eager. Are they going to go down quickly? Or are they, yep, yeah, you see, they're already down steady. Already down steady within seconds, and they're going down quick as well. The missile fire, the fact their friends are outing, and the fact we have infinite morale is not helping them at all. These guys have broken as well. If we get these desert infantry down, it's game over for the Numidians. In fact, General, start chasing these guys down. Might as well. Yeah, I I, I want to kill every last one of them, but they, they, they never stood a chance because the walls were just too much for them. Peasants just charging. You might as well, lads. We can retrain you. Yeah. I mean, unlucky. There we go, victory. Might as well kill them all. I don't particularly want to see them again. But otherwise, been a pretty solid battle. We took 1% losses. So I'm pretty happy with that. And there we go. Heroic victory. 395 kills to 6. That's why you don't attack a huge city with a crappy Numidian force. Okay, so who else wants to attack us? Does anyone? The Scythians? Now, the Scythians have declared war on us, remember. Ah, oh, now this isn't good. Oh, damn pirates. Well, I don't think we are going to take Salamis this uh, turn because the pirates have knocked us back. The pirates have saved the Egyptians here. Clear defeat. We've been knocked back a long old way. Okay, you, 26-year-old, no traits. Ah, I'm not bothered about you. Right, the Egyptians, they, they got a bit lucky there. Faction announcements, you can read that if you want to. Some pretty good retinue and trait increases indeed. Nice stuff to see. Well, let's have a look at Salamis first. Can the ship actually make it? No, of course it can't. Of course it can't. Right. Now this is a decent navy. Get rid of those stupid pirates. Go on. Clear victory. Good. You get out of here. Okay, we actually sunk them, which is very, very good. So this navy, basically, the one down south, this navy needs to get to Salamis as quickly as it can, and it can be shadowed by this admiral. Don't think they're going to be able to join, but just come along there and chill out. Okay, that's a good start. Now let's have a look at the Julii first of all, I think. And they didn't attack Doris the Brave. I'm surprised. I thought they were going to, actually. I thought they were going to. Now, have a look at Segesta. Pretty weak. There's only five units in there. So, I think we should put Segesta right under siege. I think the Julii... Well, we'll have a look in a second, actually. 
I think the Julia have expanded beyond Northern Italy. Yeah, they've expanded into Gaul. Do you know what? They can keep this territory. I'm interested in taking Mediolanium, Segesta, and Retim off them. Once I've done that, I'm satisfied that I've pretty much destroyed the Julia as much as I need to. Now, Fiden got knocked back. Oh, we have Mediolani. What am I talking about? Go back to Araminum and just recruit and retrain over there. Don't take a retinue yet. You and Doros combined can go and do that. And remember, we have an army very, very slowly coming up. Kirkion of Lacedon. Any decent units? I ah, can't be bothered about you. Very, very slowly coming up to also deal with the Senate. So eventually he'll get there. And he'll be able to help out. It's going to take him a solid like two or so turns though anyway. So, you know, we'll wait and we'll be patient. But that's the Julia I dealt with this turn. Now, the Dacians. Yes, you are heading up to Lovacy up here. Any good mercenaries? I mean, I'm always happy to pick up some... We have a ton of money. We'll pick up some Sarmatians. We will pick up some Illyrians as well. Why not? We'll pick up you guys. And you start heading up towards Lovacy. That'd be beautiful if you started doing that. And then you, Penlithos of Nicaea, no, 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 you're not going around that way. You're going to knock him back and then go to... Really? Can we just attack him again? Okay, we can attack him again. So I think we're probably going to do this. Captain Zalmoxis, Warband, which are not very good at all. Not compared to our armor top lights anyway at this point in the game. And then a general and some more Warband. I would prefer if they attacked us. I'll, I'll think about that. I might just stay there. I don't particularly like being offensive with hoplites. We'll see. Now, over in modern-day Libya, we have been assembling an army. So we have these guys here, plus the general, Telis the Conqueror. Telis the Conqueror. I'll repeat that again. So you guys, why don't, how many troops are actually in Siwa? A fair amount. A solid, like, eight or nine. Okay, well, yeah, bring as many guys as you can without Thebes being unhappy. If we took all these guys out, are they going to... They're not going to be happy, which is fair enough. You take some Libyan mercenaries... Still a bit unhappy. Can we lower the tax rate? No, we can't. Um, guys, you're just going to have to be unhappy for a turn or so, I'm afraid. Yeah, to be honest, I have a lack of sympathy. Just you start going towards sea. When we've sorted out Salamis already. So let's have a look at Bostra, which is... Is this the last Egyptian settlement? Is that all they've got now? Are they are they down to one... No, two settlements that quickly. They, they look like they're down to two settlements. So you can see how quickly we dealt with the Egyptians. They're at ten. Went down to two very, very quickly. That is the way to deal with them, is to pincer them, to trap them. So, we need to form an army to go and take Bostra. Now, we do have a big old army at Jerusalem. Yep, yeah, we have this army at Jerusalem. Is this all we've got? Is there... Oh, there's an army in Petra, no? There is indeed an army at Petra. Okay, well, how about we bring the two armies, and the two armies combined can go and take Bostra. I mean, really, maybe we don't even need that much. Okay, I'm going to bring you guys out of Jerusalem... So, Jerusalem is going to be a bit unhappy. Lower the tax rate. Get yourself some baths. And get yourself some mercenaries. And they're alright. So, Philip, I want you just to stand around here. And it looks like you need a bit of cavalry and a bit of missile. Well, we have some missiles and we have some cavalry. So, why don't you guys all join up? Like so. That's a solid army. This army can start going towards Bostra. Now, the rest of you guys, you still have a job to do. And your job is going to be to take Jamartha, which I just want to take again because it's a nice big region to take. And it will look good on the map. It will definitely look good on the map if we take Jamartha. Not particularly strong. So what we'll do is we'll take the general and we'll take probably all of you guys apart from you two. Would you be really unhappy? With some peasants, you're going to be fine. So you guys are going to head on a long old journey to Jamartha. It's going to take a solid five or six turns, but it's all right. We can deal with it. So... That's what's happening over there. Again, I don't really think there's a lot I can do because it's more just sort of moving towards places and all of that. I'm just sort of surveying the area. Um, oh, yes. I forgot. Poor Elizabeth is under siege. Now, could probably do with some troops. So let's get some lads down from here. Sipas of Ilum alongside, I don't know, you guys plus you. Just head down to Poor Elizabeth. Go and sort that out. Lovely. Alright, I'm going to do some recruitment and construction, and I think we'll be ready to end the turn again. Okay, I think we've done all we can. I'm a little bit worried about public order in the north of Italy. Hopefully they don't rebel. If not, we'll have to send an army to take them back. But we'll, we'll see what goes on there. So diplomats moving around, that's fine by me. Do they rebel? Mediolanium rebels, not Batavium. Okay, slightly annoying, but, you know, these things happen. At least Batavium... 
Oh, there's a big there's a big Julii army out coming out of nowhere. There's a lot happening up in the north of Italy. We'll discuss that in a second. Thapsus has been put back under siege, which is fine. Civil revolt. Yeah, in Mediolanium, I noticed. Writing in Batavium, Tylus. Okay, public order was a lot better a while back, and now things have gone a bit horrible. Pidutes of Thrace, 20 years old, looks pretty decent in the wars and all that, so you can join the family absolutely. Okay. A lot happened just then, and I'm not really quite sure exactly what did happen, so we'll have a quick look. So, Mediolanium is Julii, and they've got three men in there. A little bit annoying, but something we can deal with. This army of Herius Nobilior has come out of absolutely nowhere, probably Gaul, to come and relieve the Julii, which is a bit annoying, but we can deal with it. And Doros still has Segesta under siege. If he attacks Segesta right now... It's, I mean, we could go and take Segesta right now, and then he could go back up and deal with Mediolanium. What are these men? Absolute garbage. Okay, fine. Over in Salamis, we can finally get this army over and go and take the island of Cyprus. So you guys go and do that. Beautiful. Build a couple of rams. You'll be able to take that next turn. Beautiful stuff. This army can go and put Bostra under siege, and we will be attacked by Kia next turn, but we are perfectly capable of fighting that. And you, you could start carrying on moving along here. You know what, builder? Okay, it's enemy territory apparently, so we can't build a watchtower. Fair enough. This army is heading further towards Siwa, so you get ever closer to being there. This army just put you of them under siege and build a couple of rams. Lovely stuff. The same goes for this army. You can go and put Lovacy under siege. Cool. Okay. I think our main troubles really lie with the Julii. And to start off with, I think Doros the Brave needs to take Segesta. Now, I am slightly worried about Patavium and its public order. And when I say slightly, I mean very worried about Patavium and its public order. I think Finan Salinas, he can't even get to Patavium. Oh, for goodness sake, and we have no ships around here either. Damn. And this guy, he needs to get up quickly because he is needed more and more every turn. Okay, so he can't get up to Patavium, which means there could be some severe public order issues. They're going to have to hold out for one turn and not rebel. There's nothing we can do about it. What I want is I want Doris the Brave to go and take Segesta right now. So we'll fight this right now. What have we got? We've got Manius Julius and then the reinforcements outside of the city of Captain Julianus. So Doris the Brave's army, pretty solid. It's, you know, it's all right. Manius Julius... Nothing particularly special, pre-Marian army, Captain Julianus, pretty much the same. What I'm planning to do is, is I want Doris the Brave to storm the city very, very quickly, take the plaza, and then if Manus Julius wants to come in, we can set up in a nice defensive city, uh, sorry, position in their own city. That should work pretty well. I, I quite like that idea. So what we're going to do, rush the city and defend it from within. Let's see if Doris the Brave can do exactly that. Right, so here we are. Luckily, the walls are pretty much non-existent. So, we have three rams, which is good, because it means we can get in the city nice and quickly. So, you three guys, just get up to the wall. Everyone else, which is all of you guys minus you, just line up along here. So, we're going to start the battle nice and quickly. Just pause it. So, we're going to get the three rams to rush to the wall as quickly as we can and take the city. Now, it might not be super easy to take the city. You never know. Um, you know, there's, I mean, we do have, we outnumber the first army. I don't think we outnumber the armies together, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, looking at things, we've only just got to the wall, and that army is basically already in the city. I don't think we're going to be able to rush the plaza. That is something that's not going to be possible. Now, they've been so quick in coming over here. You know, normally they're not that quick. It's fair enough. We will have to fight them from within. We still have the advantage. The balance of power is in our favour, so I'm perfectly fine with that. Right, the gates are down, good to see. For some reason, this one isn't quite down yet. So there we go. Right, pause it for a second. They've guarded that gate with Equites. Bad idea, considering we have a ton of hoplites. So you two, go for the Equites. You need to get in... in we drop the stupid ram. And then you three, go and deal with those Astarte. You two, plus you, go and deal with that Astarte nice and quickly. This isn't going to be easy. We're going to take losses. Um, that is the nature of these battles, where if they're guarding a, an entranceway, there's kind of not a lot you can do about it. 
And I mean, they're firing in their peeler, which is a bit annoying as well. So let's go in and attack them. But the Equites hopefully should break very, very quickly due to the Spearmen. And then the other two units should be able to overwhelm them with numbers, I'm hoping. So we'll just speed up very, very slightly. But this unit of Phalanx is about to hit their starty. They're steady. We're eager. So good start. And we've got reinforcements coming along the way as well, which is nice to see. Now these Equites, they should really suffer. Our spears are down, wavering. Did that unit break? Or are they just running off like cowards? They're just running off like cowards. That's fair enough. They're broken. And they're broken. Beautiful. Right, if we could just get on these guys when they come around the corner. That would be lovely. You come in the city as well. And then if we could kill... Actually, you guys. Focus on killing these Astarte, if you wouldn't mind. Yep, yeah, there they go. They were out. Like the Julii cowards, they are. Beautiful. Good start. Right, they're coming back for some more archers. Actually, don't fire. I don't want you wasting your arrows on these guys. They are cowards. They should not even be here. They're not fit to fly the Julii flag. Well, actually, maybe they are because they're cowards. Right, so we're very slowly going to make our way to the plaza. It will take quite a while, now in this game. And the speed of my hoplites. Right, we've managed to make our way to the plaza, and there's actually not a lot here, because a lot of the Julii seem to be wandering around the city, which is fine by me. So what we'll do, literally, guys, just come over and start marching towards these Welletes. I mean, Welletes should be easy to break down. You guys just drop back slightly. Let the hoplites do the brunt of the work, please. Right, the other Julii are indeed coming down this street, which is fine. We have a mass of hoplites coming up the street, which should hopefully just be making their way very, very slowly uh, towards the Welletes, which is good to see. And there's also a few war dogs that decided to charge. They're more than welcome to do that. So Welletes, guys, come on, just be a bit quicker. There's no, there's no pace to you guys nowadays, okay? You're slow. I know you're old and you're tired and it's been 37 parts and you're probably needing a rest, but still... Kill these stupid Welletes, please. Once we've taken Rome, you can have a rest then. There they go. They break. Let's see if we can kill their general before he makes it to the plaza. Pace, lads. Get out of Phalanx. Run towards them, because if he makes it to the plaza, he's got infinite morale. These troops will not have infinite morale if they are not on the plaza. And it means, actually, they're going to have quite low morale. Their general just charges straight into the Phalanx. That unit routes straight away. If we can kill their general, that'd be so, so good. Everyone needs to focus on killing that general. Uh, how are they doing? Couple units route, that's fine. I don't really care about them. I want to kill that general. He's steady, but he's going down quickly, which is good to see. A mass of spears are pointing straight into him. You guys focus on these Welletes who are being a bit annoying. But how's their general doing? That's a little bit too zoomed in. How are they doing? He's down to seven. He's down to seven, but one of our units break. And that's not good because we don't want a mass route going on here. Okay, their general dies. Good. That was vital. Now carry on going on towards the Hastati. What I want, I want my cavalry. If you could charge around the back of those Hastati, they're going to be absolutely screwed. As for the archers, start coming over here and just firing over. You are now allowed to fire at will. Now, how are the Hastati doing compared to us? They're steady and exhausted. We're eager and winded. Okay, that's good. That's good, 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 good. Guys, you need to start pouring in here, okay? You're being a little bit slow. These guys need some support. Now, how's the old general doing? Where is he? He's making his way over. Good stuff. So you just make your way over around here, please. Lovely. Right, how are the front line doing? Because it's good. We managed to catch them off the plaza and actually a couple of them are routing, which means they'll die very, very quickly. But it's so good we've managed to catch them off the plaza. This unit's around here. They might as well just stay there, to be honest. I'm not really sure what they're quite doing. But yeah. Another unit of Julii route, good to see. Their captain dies, which is going to hurt the rest of them massively, and they're just going to retreat to the plaza, which I don't blame them for, but I still want to trap the odd unit of Hastati if I can do so, please. So what were their names? Their names were Captain Julianus, of course, and what was the general called? Manius Julius. Well, he is now Manius the Dead. I'm more focusing on killing these guys. These have started broken, which means they're going to be churned down really quickly. These guys are shaken, so they haven't got much longer to live either. Doros, you were just a bit too slow, I think, today, to be honest. But it's all right. The hoplites have done the majority of the good work. And look what they've got on the plaza. War dog handlers and war dogs. They're not going to do anything, really. Then we've got Welletes. They're not proper infantry. And war dogs. Again, not proper infantry. I think we've had a very good chance here. Yep, everyone's routing. Guys, just get onto the plaza. I think the Julia are pretty screwed now. I think they're pretty screwed. Right, they've released the war dogs. We're just piling onto the plaza. How many kills have they got? 
They've got about 30% kills, but we've got 86% kills, and now we're just churning them down on the plaza. This is just not proper infantry. There's no good infantry here, really. Archers just focus on the old unit like this, but I think we stand a very, very good chance. I'll speed it up slightly, actually. As the last few judo, I go down. Well, well, well. Um, I see you're very dead there, Julia. I shouldn't have been so annoying and taken Mediolanium back. We will take it back, by the way, so, you know, it's alright. I'm pretty sure I didn't order Doros to come in, but you know what? He's too eager to kill the Julia, and I can't blame him for that, okay? I cannot blame him. Clear victory. Oh, well, I'm assuming he's going to say that. Yeah, there you go. Clear victory. 609 kills to 288. I'll absolutely take that. So that's a good start to this turn, so Gesta is now ours, we now need to go and retake Mediolanium, so we'll exterminate these bastards, hopefully their public order will not be too bad, Doros the Mighty, wow, he keeps getting better and better, wait, we need to have a look at this, Doros the Mighty, Doros the Mighty, I mean, this annoys me, he's an attacker, he just clearly isn't, okay, that's just propaganda, that's, that's, that's Julian propaganda, but, legendary commander, Plus 5 command, I mean, conquering hero, being in the wars, utterly fearless. Plus 4 morale for all troops in the battlefield. Obviously the faction leader, great defender, destroyer. Wiping out entire populations is sometimes necessary. Enjoy it. Enjoying doing it is not, unless you treat it as an art form. 20% bonus cash gain from looting. I've never even seen that one before, I don't think. Um, dislikes farming, who cares about farming? This guy... This guy is really something. Doros the Mighty. I particularly like the legendary commander and utterly fearless. Beautiful stuff. He's got some fantastic traits. Doros the Mighty, you truly do live up to your name. Now go and destroy the Julii for me, please. That'd be very nice. So I think we need to retrain here in Zagesta. Retrain all of this stuff like so. Now, what to do with Spider and Salinas? This is tough because really... He needs to get over to Batavium to make sure they don't rebel. But what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to get two Militia Hoplites to go over to Batavium. It's going to take them two turns. They're going to have to last a turn. So Gestica just recruit some peasants. And hopefully that will sort out the public order. In fact, so Gestica literally just needs a tax reduction. That's fine. Okay. Doris, you're staying in Gesta for the moment. Find on the Salinas. You can probably start moving towards Doros. How far can this guy get? Herius could not reach if he came here. So we'll just stay there. That's fine. That's what we're doing with the Julii. You just make your way to Patavium. It's going to take you a million years. It's fine. So that situation over with the Julii. We, we moved as far as we can in Numidia. Bostra we have put under siege along with Salamis. Along with the two Dacian territories which I don't believe we can take now. My memory is god awful nowadays. Yeah we can't take that one. And can we take you of them? I don't think we can, actually. No, because that will all be next turn. Okay. I I do believe we are ready to... Ah, the only thing is the Scythians. Now, I don't want to fight the Scythians out in the open field, particularly. They're annoying to fight in the open field. What I'd rather do is pick up these Bastani and just stand outside of Porolisum. If they want to attack, they're going to have to attack a much bigger force. Don't do it, Scythia. You'll regret it. Okay, you'll, you'll regret it. In fact, we might go and take Campus City just for your in indiscretion. Because you, you did a naughty thing. Okay, taking Porolissum. So we might just have to counterattack you. I'm not sure. We'll see how much my bloodlust lasts. Either way, I'm ready to end the turn. Let's see what happens. Right, turn has ended and we've been attacked. Okay, we've been attacked immediately. And this is exactly what I expected. We've been attacked outside of Bostra by Kia and Amod. Now, this is fine. The army of Kia is, I think, the only big Egyptian army that is left. It is the last army that is really something. It's 1,300 men. Kia himself, who is either faction leader, he's the pharaoh, and the faction heir. And a bunch of, well, typical Egyptian units, but not amazing ones. Now, Nile Spearman, pretty solid. Got some good defence. Nubian Spearmen aren't that amazing. You've got peasants that are... Bul you know, bulking up the number. Chariots, we've discussed many times, do not do anything to the Greeks. Same with the skirmishers. This army's not amazing. The Nile Spearmen are pretty solid. I'll give you that. They might be a bit of trouble, but it's a big army, but 
that's more quantity over quality over there. And then ammos, that army's nothing, really. That army's nothing. So I think the good army of Philip, Aminicles of Philippi, will be plenty enough to defeat the Egyptians here. And if we do defeat the Egyptians here, Bostrut should be ours. Let's see how it goes. Right, so here we are, the Battle of Bostra. Or the Battle for Bostra, really. Now, where are the armies coming from? We have the main army, which is attacked, as I think, from outside the city. It's Kia, so yeah, from outside the city. And then the army that's attacked us from the city. Which I believe, yep, is over there. So we should have one army coming from over there, and the other big army coming from over here. So really, we want to set up... I mean, there's a nice, convenient dune over here. Why don't we set up, kind of facing both of them, in this sort of a direction? So what we're going to do, same as what we've done often in recent times, we're going to have a front line that looks a little bit like this. Nice, thick line of phalanx. We're then going to have... My maths is wrong, I believe. Nice, thick line of hoplites over here. And then we're going to have two hoplites on each flank, if I can use the buttons correctly. Like so. Then we're going to have the archers in behind the phalanx, so they're nice and protected. So come along like this, off skirmish mode, and that, like that. And then the cavalry can be at the back doing their thing. Okay, beautiful. That looks like a pretty solid army to me. That looks like an army which can defeat the Egyptians on any day of the week. So we will start the battle. I don't want you to be skirmishing. There's a lot of Egyptians here. My laptop is going to hate this, but you know who's going to hate this more? The Egyptians. Let's go. Okay, what seems like about a million years, the Egyptians have come over. And, well, I think we're going to see the same story as usual, which is their phalanx is going to be decent, but as soon as one unit breaks, it's going to cause an absolute domino effect on the others. And also, units like chariots are completely redundant against us. The chariots just will do absolutely nothing to a phalanx when they charge straight in to them, which they invariably will. So a peculiar tactic from the Egyptians, they've sent two units forward, the rest of the army has basically decided to sit back, relax and watch them get killed. Which is interesting, our units are already firing in on them, it's absolutely fine. So yeah, Egyptians, I mean, odd tactic, isolating your units and then sending skirmishes forward, I mean that's fair enough, I think they are eventually actually going to come forward, but Isolating these units like that, they're already shaken, they've only just touched our spears, so, and that unit breaks, there you go. So, chariots, they charge into the phalanx, some got round the back, in all fairness, so, yeah, oh, that was actually cavalry, I think, not, not chariots, but whatever, they still died, so that's fine. What have we got here, we've got desert cavalry charging into the back, Philip, you come in, charge, do your horns, so you go to the back, please, lovely stuff, just get these guys down, come on. Wavering, broken, beautiful stuff. Get back there. So the cavalry's pretty much already been negated with minimal loss. What else is going on? It looks like there's going to be a chariot charge over on this side, hopefully. I mean, the chariots, very, very low defense. They are absolutely useless against the phalanx of the Greeks. What have we got over here? Peasants. I think Philip can go and... Philip can deal with peasants, but don't particularly want to risk him against the chariots. So we'll just leave it there. To be honest, the peasants are going to do nothing. Um, to the phalanx anyway, and the chariots charge in, and the chariots all die, and somebody's dead, presumably one of the three generals, Tantanum, I think that was the leader of the secondary force, or it was the faction heir, either way, he's dead, the person I really want to kill today is Kia, to kill the pharaoh, that would be amazing, and actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, pause, if we kill all the generals, we might actually destroy the Egyptians in this battle, because the only other settlement they've got, is Salamis, and that does not have a general in it. So I think these th last three generals are all that the Egyptians have. I think if we win this, we might destroy Egypt, but we'll see. I mean, maybe, maybe not. To be, to be honest, they're pretty screwed either way. So what have we got? We've got peasants charging into phalanx. There's Axemen. There's Axemen, solid. But the amount of morale debuffs they're going to have, thanks to all their friends dying and throwing their lives away, is just enough to make them collapse. Hopefully, anyway, they're already shaken, so that's fine. We're taking a few losses, which is inevitable against a big Egyptian army like this, but, I mean, it's, what is it, it's 3% to 33%. I'll take that any day of the week. What have we got over here? We've got peasants charging into the side of the phalanx. Well, just get them down, Philip. Just, just get them down. Just see you later, peasants. Come on. Off you go. Start running. There you go. There you go. They are gone. Lovely. 
I mean, a mass of fleeing Egyptians. Like I said, the domino effect is ever-present. What is also ever-present is glitchy phalanx. I mean, that is um, always a ever-present because this guy gets stuck behind, so they try and join him. How about you be unstuck and just join your friends over there? That would be a good idea rather than running back. You know, just hold the line. That's your job. Your one job. Hold the line and stab people. You see, though, a couple of them have got back. Somehow they've got trapped. And these things happen, I suppose. Now, a lot of the Egyptians seem to be cowardly and fleeing. Which is, you know, what we expect of the Egyptian army. But I do want, though, is to kill their general. Okay, some chariots have charged in over this side. Is one of them the general? Or is that the general? Is it the general? I can't see. Is that the general? It is the general. He's routing. Can we kill him? Yes, we can. Who's that, then? Is that Kia? I think that's two out of three. That's Kia. That is the pharaoh of Egypt. You've just seen die there. So, I think if we kill the last general, Egypt might be gone. But I don't know if that's actually possible. And I, he might be too cowardly. We, we never know. We are winning this pretty solidly. Where is that last general? There he is. He's, he's, he's 25 men, which is, you know, not that many. If we could focus on getting him... That would be good because they're weak to arrows because they've got poor defense. The same goes to the Bedouin archers. If you could just focus on the chariot general, then hopefully A, that will bait him into the phalanx and B, it could actually kill him by virtue of the fact that the arrows are potent against the rubbish chariots. I mean, I'm really hating on chariots here, but I personally just, I think that the AI do not use them very well. And at that point, they become pretty redundant, uh, particularly against the Hellenic army, which has a lot of phalanx like mine does. As you can see there, front line collapsing. I mean, why are they using peasants? I'll never know. Charging peasants into armoured hoplites is just something that would never work a million times out of a million. Um, more chariots deciding to suicide themselves. How is their general doing? I actually don't want to focus on the general too much now because I'm worried that he's going to rout break over there and start routing and that's not very good so just um cancel that order just fire on anyone please in fact you're out of arrows anyway so that's fine but i really want him to charge he might not in which case i think egypt will still be around because they still have a general left but not the end of the world you know we'll, we'll just kill him another day and we'll kill their faction another day in fact we could kill them in a few minutes anyway because i think salamis has got like no men left anyway so to be honest either way i think egypt have gone this turn Huge amount of Egyptians fleeing, which is absolutely fine by me. How many of them we actually managed to kill? Two thirds of them, which I'll absolutely take. That's fine. That, that's just really good stuff. He's down to nine. That's cool as well. Yet yeah, you should not be chasing people. Do you hear me? You're on defensive mode. No. Naughty. Okay, hold the line. I know you have a bloodlust, but not today, I'm afraid. No, you don't today. What have we actually got? We've got skirmishers. I mean, to be honest, General, just go and kill these skirmishers. They're just annoying me at this point. You you morons, okay? Point your spears the right way, if you wouldn't mind. I know that's a very difficult concept, that you point this pointy end towards the bad people. Stop for a second. Did not realise there's chariots there. Chariots can be absolutely deadly to generals. Philip, you need to get out there as quick as you can. Philip, get out. I did not realise we got away with one there. Chariots can be deadly to generals. The amount of generals I've lost to, to um, chariots over the years has been quite a few. That is what chariots are good for, incidentally. I think they're pretty much backing off now. This general's just happy firing missiles at us. I'm going to speed up a little bit, see if anything interesting happens. So pretty much the whole army is gone, apart from these stupid skirmishers. A clump of troops here and the general, none of whom are wanting to actually run forward. Which is slightly annoying, it means that really we can't actually physically get to them. He is actually moving slightly now. Maybe he's run out of missiles. If he has, that's good, because it hopefully means he'll charge into the phalanx. You never know. Sorry, but you've just got to love this guy. You've got to love his enthusiasm. Everyone else standing there like complete statues in their armour, and then you've got this geezer just dancing with a flag. You are the true hero, man. You are the true hero. I mean... Probably not very effective in killing Egyptians, but you're looking swag, and that is the most important thing. I've had it on max speed now for ages, and the Egyptians are just refusing to move forward. Let's just see if he wants to charge into the phalanx. It's just starting to annoy me now how the Egyptians are refusing to move forward. So you guys um, start moving forward as well. Just move towards these Egyptians, and we'll just see if they want to attack, because at the moment they're being incredibly cowardly, which is what we're used to seeing. I'm from the Egyptians, but it's actually a little bit annoying because I haven't got all the time in the world, okay? 
I've got stuff to be doing. Right, those chariots charge into the back of the phalanx, which is not ideal. Not ideal. Okay. Slightly annoying, but they did eventually break. I'm focusing on the Egyptian chariot general. Okay, so we've got some geezers coming along over here. You start attacking them. You start attacking them. We've got a lot of Egyptians routing over here. Where's their general? We need him dead, okay? Oh, he routes. Damn it. Coward. Absolute coward. He's going to get away then. Well, your faction is going to become nothing next turn when we take Salamis. So screw you. Philip, take as many of them down as you can. There we go. Victory. They're all routing. Good to see. Just get as many of them down as possible. But yeah, it's pretty much over, I think. I don't think we've done enough to take um, Bostra. Not the end of the world, in all honesty. Not the end of the world. I'm absolutely fine with that. You know, it should be pretty easy taking it next turn, to be honest. And that's the battle. 1,349 kills to around 120. I would say that's a pretty clear victory indeed. Well done, Philip. You did a good job today. In fact, you are actually one of the finer generals we have. I think you, Doros the Mighty, and Telis the Conqueror, you really have been the sort of triumvirate of this Greek campaign. You've been really fantastic. So Bostra doesn't fall into our hands. Let's have a look at this then. At war with the Julii, yes we are. They demand a ceasefire, or they're offering a ceasefire, sorry. And they demand 103,270 denarii. That's quite a lot of money. And Segesta and Araminum. Do you know what I say to that? I say no. Goodbye, Sextus Antio. We'll see you in hell. Okay. Scythians are spying on us. Okay, well, whatever. Do you know what? You're not going to do anything anyway. Theo, I think we're going to call this guy Theo. Theophylactos of Parcelus. Yeah. Theo, good commander, good attacker, publicly loyal. Yeah, you look pretty decent. So, why don't you join the family? Okay, end of turn report. City grows. Where's that? Syracuse. We haven't been to Syracuse in a while. Get yourself a royal palace. Why don't you? Lovely stuff. City expands as well. Mazakar. Good to see. Get yourself a councillor's chambers. Lovely. There are the faction announcements. A lot of retinue. A lot of retinue, which I cannot be bothered to read. So, if you want to look at that, you can just pause it. Okay, so what have we got? Let's first of all have a look at Bostra. Have, I mean, what exactly is in Bostra at this point? Like, can we just take it now? I mean, we can probably auto-resolve that, right? We've got to be able to auto-resolve that. Clear victory. Okay, 226 kills to about 200. That's absolutely fine. So they back off. Bostra is indeed ours. And we will exterminate you because you are... Oh, and that is the end of the Egyptians. <laughs> A very anticlimactic finish, but to be honest, the big climax was actually that last battle um, outside of Bostra. Faction destroyed Egypt. Honestly, we destroyed the Egyptians way more efficiently than the Seleucids, than the Macedonians, than the Thracians, than the Dacians. We really did that efficiently, and if I say so myself, that is how you destroy Egypt, is by pincering them taking their homeland and just absolutely overwhelming them from every angle possible. The Egyptians, they didn't really put up much of a fight, and I'm very happy to see that. So Bostra is indeed ours. Now, actually causes complications in Salamis, because Salamis is actually much better now, because the rebels, for some reason, just appear out of nowhere and are actually a bit better. But I think we should be able to take Salamis. We'll probably do that next episode, unless it's really in our favour and I just don't realise. Yeah, I don't know what to resolve that. We'll do that next episode. So we'll take Salamis next episode. And talk in the next episode, we'll be moving towards the Martha as well. That will take forever, but it is worth it. Just because it will look nice on the map. So you go and do that. Is there anywhere else we can take very quickly? Batavium is in the green now, which is really good, by the way. Still, get yourself some Militia Hoplite. You... Looking a little bit scary, Herius and the Bilior, but to be honest, I think we have still got plenty of force um, to go over to Mediolanium and go and put that under siege. In fact, we can go and do that now, hopefully. Yes, so, Doris the Mighty, yes, bring everyone along, yes. apart from you two. Just just push you out of the way. Just just quickly push you out of the way, Captain Cassius. Get out of the way. Yeah, and then also bring along... I think Fiden should stay behind, but I think that Doros should bring along you... You, all of you as well. So all of you come along with Doros. 
and just start making your way. No, stop Doros, Doros, you're cool, don't do that. Um, just stand here, I don't want to attack this guy on the bridge, because he might not back off, and that could be a problem. So just stand there, hopefully he attacks us, if not, we'll have to force our way through to Mediolani otherwise. Fiden, get inside to Gesto and make it happy, beautiful. So that's what's going on over there. Can we quickly take the Dacian settlements, because... You know, if we can do that, then I will absolutely try. Could auto resolve that. Don't particularly want to. It is just a little bit too much in their favour for me to want to do that. So we'll do that next episode. Yeah, the battle for you of them will be next time. As for Lovacy, can we take that now? Or is it, again, a little bit too risky to auto resolve? Again, a little bit too risky. So next time, we'll take Lovacy. We'll take you of them. We'll take Salamis. We'll take the Martha will hopefully be moving towards um, Mediolanium um, to go and retake that, and Eretium. And once we've done all of that, we'll go and take Rome. So I reckon it'll probably be about two, maybe three more episodes left, but we're really getting towards the end now. As for Libya, let's put Siwa under siege by Tellius the Conqueror. Just, yeah, pick yourself up some new Midian mercenaries. Why not? You know, why, why flipping not? And go and put Siwa under siege. Just build a couple of rams. Beautiful stuff. And that is where we are going to end the episode. With, basically, a lot of the map under siege. I do remember that Thapsis is under siege. And by a decent force. Not an amazing force, but pretty big force. So, might want to bring up some lads from Lepkis Magna, actually. How about... We get a ship over to Thapsus and we'll go and deal with that. So Hermitimos, all we'll need really is Hermitimos and four hoplites. That'll be plenty enough um, to, to, to go and deal with the Numidians there. So just jump aboard that ship. It'll take them a couple of turns to attack probably anyway. And just come over to Thapsus and defend that. So that is where I'm going to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.